few weeks have passed, colder weather is approaching, and we're trying to finish off the exterior as quickly as possible. We've hired subcontractors to move things along on several different parts of the project, like the roof, the staining, and the windows and doors. We'll show you what we've been doing and explain some of the aspects unique to log building. At this stage, we have somebody staining the logs for us, the roof's coming along pretty well, and we even have some of the windows and door openings taken out already. Now we'll go through all those steps, but first we'd like to concentrate on the staining process. We're using a waterborne latex stain that comes in several colors. We've chosen a light natural color. Not only is it designed to highlight the grain of the wood, but also to seal and protect the wood from moisture. In fact, Tom Tusek's upstairs working on it right now. Tom's using an airless sprayer to apply the stain. A brush or a lint-free cloth would also work. Now, the surface should be completely dry before application, and it needs about eight hours of dry weather afterward for proper absorption. We also sanded down all the log ends to close the log grains, and contracted another pressure wash to remove all road grime and sawdust. The stain actually coats the wood fibers to protect them against fungus and mildew. But while it keeps out rain, it also allows any moisture in the logs to evaporate. The manufacturer recommends that the initial coat go on in a two-step process known as a wet-on-wet -wet application. You go over a specific area once to moisten the wood, and then apply the stain a second time to let it soak in and surround the fibers. Then, for optimum performance, another coat may be applied 12 to 24 hours after the wet-on-wet -wet application. We'll put on another coat of stain next year to cover the shrinkage and the cracking that occurs in any new log home. This waterborne stain weathers gradually, but safely, without harming the environment. So we'll be applying other coats as they're needed throughout the years. And we're also going to be staining the interior logs, but we'll wait till we're done with the finishing work there. Okay, you've got it in the center there? Alright, now this is a pretty good fit down here. Now we'd like to show you some of the elements of this roof, which are quite a bit different from a conventional roof. Well, first off, we put the ceiling boards down first, then we build the rest of the roof up on top of that. So we lay our first 1x6 here at the end of the rafter. This actually becomes the underside of the overhang. Then as we move up the rafters, these boards begin to form the ceiling on the inside of the building. We're using one by six tongue and groove boards that are made out of incense cedar. This is a little different than the aromatic red cedar that you find in the lining of closets. It might be a little familiar all the same. It's used in making pencils. And it's also machinable, which makes it good for paneling, for siding, and for decking. The tongue and groove boards already cover much of the roof. They're nailed perpendicular to the log rafters over the master bedroom, producing horizontal seams. But over the main part of the roof, they're secured to the log purlins, creating vertical seams. We're nailing the boards in face down to leave the smooth side exposed below. To hide the joints between boards, we're cutting them so the joints land right on the log. The inside ends run into a routed groove along the gable end, producing a tight fit. We lay down insulation wherever the boards cross the wall locks to seal out weather and we let the boards run wild over the gable end. When we're done, we cut them all to the same length with a circular saw. Once we get all the 1x6 installed, we want to apply a layer of 30-pound felt as soon as possible. This will protect it from rain and snow and whatever else might happen here in the next couple of weeks, at least until we get the rest of the roof on. And we install this just like we do any other roof project. We roll it out, overlap the edges up here, and staple it down. Hey, Doctor, I have to go back here just a little bit. That's perfect right there. When the felt's done, you could just put up a layer of shingles and call the roof finished. And that work fine in a moderate climate. But here in the Northlands, we need a roof with a little more insulating value. So we're building up from the ceiling boards with 2 by 8 rafters. And these create spaces for insulation. And we're doing this on the main roof as well as the dormers because we want to insulate every part of the roof, which is where most of the heat is lost. The rafters are framed 24 inches on center. Now, they don't provide any structural support. It's actually the purlins underneath that frame the roof. And they run from the peak down past the overhang. And we nail on this 2x4 
some fascia board here, you notice that the 2 by 8s are notched out to form this overhang here. What it does is create an open area where we can ventilate the roof by running continuous soffit vent right along the overhang like so. This is rigid insulation called blue boards, and it's two inches thick, and that gives us an R value of 10. It comes in four by eight sheets, but we're ripping it down to 22 and a half inches, so it'll fit snug between our rafters. We're installing three layers of styrofoam between the rafters for a total R value of about 30. And even with three layers, it still gives us a good inch between the top of the insulation and the bottom of the sheathing, which is good. Because in wintertime, we're going to need some ventilation here. We need cool air passing up between the insulation and the sheathing to prevent ice dams on the roof. Over the insulation and the rafters, we're putting down a half-inch layer of plywood. And this step is almost identical to the sheathing on a conventional roof. Once the sheathing's secured, we'll seal the roof with some more builder's felt, and then finish it off with shingles. But there's plenty of work to do before we get to that point. But anyway, this should give you a good idea of what goes into a roof on a log home. For now, we just want to get this pile of plywood unloaded, and then we're done for the day.